In this video, I'll be going over the worst abilities in pet battling and try my best to explain why they're bad when compared to other similar moves. At number 10, we've got every new player's trap ability, Apocalypse. Apocalypse is the only instant kill effect in the game. It's just you have to wait 15 turns for it to actually work. The ability on a 20 turn cooldown, the longest in the game, will set a meteor up that won't fall until 15 turns have passed. Then the effect will instantly kill both active pets. But cockroach and beetle pets will always survive this effect. A majority of the pets who can use this ability are cockroaches and beetles, so the synergy is pretty obvious. Just use the ability on a roach or beetle, swap out, and then just swap back in 15 turns later. If the caster of this ability dies, the attack will miss, so you have to keep it alive. Now, there's two problems with this ability though. First off, it's way too slow. The average attack in pet battles does 300 damage, and the average health of a pet is 1400. Which means it would take any average pet 5 turns to kill an average pet's health with no other modifiers present, only using basic attacks, which is one of the slowest ways to take out a pet. 15 turns of waiting is 3 times as long, and puts the ability at gimmick status right off the bat. And 2, the ability requires you to stall out long enough for the ability to work, and cockroaches and beetles aren't exactly stall out pets. Sure, some of them might have some niche survivability abilities, but stall out on their own for 15 turns they cannot do. So you have to build your team around the strategy, which is a horribly inefficient thing since it takes too long to accomplish and just makes the ability bad all around because of it. So to boil it down even further, the ability takes 3 times too long and isn't worth building a team around the strategy. But if you're going against a stall sunlight team or something, it could potentially be useful as those teams never die unless you happen to have a direct counter. Or if you want to take out a high health pet in PvE pet battles and don't mind doing it in the most inefficient way possible, and maybe you only have a couple of pets at max level anyway, then it might sometimes be useful since it doesn't actually kill all boss pets. Number 9. Ka. Now, before I explain Ka, let me explain a different ability called Hawkeye. Hawkeye is a basic flying type ability that appears on a ton of flying type pets, to the point it's probably one of the most known ability amongst flying type pets, and all it does is increase your chance to crit by 75%. A crit in pet battles only does 50% more damage, and the base crit chance is 5%. So Hawkeye will increase it to 80% for 3 turns, which means getting 2 crits off the ability will have made it worth using as that will count up to a basic attack's worth of damage. And it's even more valuable if used on a harder hitting cooldown. But it's not used very much as it's just kind of mediocre and still kind of luck based. Now Kaw is just a straight up worst version of Hawkeye. It increases your chance to crit by 50% for 3 turns. Same exact effect, just 25% less crit. There's another ability called Warning Squawk, which gives your active pet 75% more crit for 3 turns, which means you can swap to another pet and let them have the crit buff. And because of this, Warning Squawk has a 5 turn cooldown, as that crit buff can be better used on other pets or AoEs and dots that are already out. But Ka only works on the pet who casts it, just like Hawkeye, and it's just a worst version of it for some reason. Which means it just kind of has to have a spot on this list for just straight up being a lesser powered version of a super basic ability. Number 8, Toxic Skin. This ability is a thorns-like effect, where while it's up, every time your opponent deals a direct attack to you, the opponent will take 5% of their maximum health as damage and it lasts for 5 turns with no cooldown. Now, the average health of a pet is 1400, making this 5% thorns damage be about 70 damage on average, which is also about the damage of the average dot in pet battles. So your opponent will have to hit you 4 times before they take about a basic attack's worth of damage with the ability. The best case scenario with this ability is if you can expect a multi-attack move like Flurry, in which case, they can potentially attack you three times in one turn and actually make this ability start to hurt. Now, for the problems with the ability. 
Most pets who use multi-hit moves are fast pets with low health, so the ability doesn't hit them very hard. Most pets with high health don't really attack with multi-hit moves. The damage is very mediocre, bordering on bad if your opponent just hits you one time per turn with it. The damage only procs on direct attacks, which excludes dots and debuffs. You have to stay in to get the full effect, so no swapping and trying to stay alive. And it doesn't do any bonus damage to a type that it counters. Unlike the similar ability Thorns, that some elemental pets can use, this ability does about the same amount of damage and has the same effect, only it does its damage in a fixed amount and scales with your pet's power instead of your opponent's health. So a strong pet with it can do more reflect damage, and it will get a tight bonus if used against a pet of its counter. And Thorns isn't very good either, but Toxic Skin is a little worse. Number 7. Uncertainty On a 3 turn cooldown, this ability will give you 100% more crit for 1 turn, but at the cost of a 25% reduced hit chance. Now on the surface, that sounds totally fine, a good buff but at a cost, until you realize better abilities exist in the game that give you better buffs with no downsides. There's a very common ability called Amplify Magic, which increases your active pet's damage by 50% for 2 turns, and with the same 3 turn cooldown. Remember, a crit in pet battles is only 50% more damage, so it's the same buff. Amplify Magic lasts for one more turn, has no negative effect, and applies its buff to whichever pet is active, so if the pet who cast it dies or swaps out, it will still work. It's just a straight up better version of Uncertainty. Inner Vision is another better ability which increases your damage by 100% for one turn, has no negative effect, and only has a one turn cooldown, making it strictly better. Now here's the kicker ability. Going Bonkers is another ability that increases your crit by 100% for two turns, has no negative effect, and has the same exact cooldown. It is literally the same effect and cooldown, only just better making Uncertainty just a terrible ability in comparison, and Ka might actually be a little bit better than it. Number 6. Void Portal Now, to explain Void Portal, let me tell you about an actual good ability called Feign Death. Feign Death on an 8 round cooldown lets you avoid all damage for the turn, and swap out to your highest health pet on the back line. With this, you can tactically avoid big hits or combos, and swap to another pet who's fresh on cooldowns without losing a turn to do the swap. It's an ability with two good effects in one, and deserving of its long cooldown for its great effect. Now Void Portal has the same exact effect, only with a twist. It has half the cooldown of Feign Death, of only 4 rounds, and it does damage to your pet equal to a basic attack. So sure, you get to avoid an ability and get a free swap, but at the cost of hurting yourself. Part of the goodness of Feign Death is in its ability to avoid damage, so giving Void Portal a damage penalty at the cost of a shorter cooldown is almost useless, because why would you want to use the ability multiple times if it's just going to keep hurting you each time? It just contributes to your death faster, and is only better than swapping normally if you're actually dodging something useful with it, or something that would do more damage than a basic attack. And even then, you're kind of losing a turn doing that. Taking damage to avoid damage and swap just defeats the purpose of the swap in the first place, making it almost a useless ability. Almost, I might add. It only appears on two pets and they're both not very good. If it appears on a really good pet in the future, it could possibly be useful in some kind of crazy niche combo, but that doesn't exist now. Number 5. Cute as a Button this ability was originally only usable by the Alec Plushie, a pet that has no damaging moves, and mostly has joke moves that do nothing, as there's an achievement for winning a whole bunch of pet battles with it since it's so useless. But recently with BFA, they gave one of its abilities to two other pets that are not joke pets, so I think it can make its way on this list. Now cute as a button doesn't actually say it does anything, but it does have a hidden effect which increases the dodge chance of your pet by 25% for 2 rounds. Now that doesn't sound half bad, if you're really lucky then that could be 2 misses of an ability for 1 move, which is good, but the chances of that are really low, 
And since cute as a button has no cooldown, you can keep spamming it to keep it up full time, like is a common tactic with the plushie, since it doesn't have damaging attacks. Only, there's another ability called Cute Face, which increases your chance to dodge by 25% for 4 turns and has no cooldown. Cute Face is just a straight up 2 times better ability that no one uses because a 25% dodge isn't something you can rely on. So if its much better version never sees play for being too unreliable, then Cute as a Button is just a straight garbage move in comparison, especially since there are actual good dodge moves, like Dodge, and all of its variations. Number 4, Nevermore. Nevermore is an ability only two pets can use, and it has the ability to make the next ability your opponent uses unusable for 5 turns, which is basically a 5 turn silence on a one ability. Now, a 5 round silence on one ability seems like it could be pretty useful, until you remember a few things about how pet battles work. Most abilities in pet battles are balanced around having a cooldown, so if an ability does something special or hits harder than normal, it usually has a cooldown already. So locking a pet out of a good ability for a little bit longer isn't that big of a deal, especially since the ability Nevermore itself has a very long cooldown of 10 rounds. So the best this ability can do is slightly inconvenience your opponent out of using a good move again for a little longer, or locking them out of their basic attack so they have to swap out to another pet. All at the cost of having to take an ability that's very situational and not super useful, does no damage, and also has an overly long cooldown for its effect. Honestly, if its cooldown was a little lower, it might be more useful. But since it, ironically, has such a long cooldown itself, it's almost useless, and more regulated to maybe a niche PvE pet battle strategy, if you remember the ability exists. Number 3, Soothe. Now, the way Soothe works is that you apply the ability, then as long as your opponent's pet takes no damage, they will fall asleep at the end of their next turn. And sleep is a CC in pet battles, that prevents the pet from doing any actions, but breaks if they take any damage. And the Sleep Soothe gives last two turns. So if you want, you can make it so your opponent's pet can't do anything for two turns while you set up buffs and stuff. Now, let me tell you why this ability is bad. Soothe has a four turn cooldown. Food Coma has a five turn cooldown and puts the target to sleep right away for two turns. With Food Coma, if you go first, you can just straight up deny your opponent's pet from attacking that turn, and then prevent them from performing any actions on their next turn, as you can then just attack them to break the sleep, and get two turns of free actions out of it. Soothe, on the other hand, requires you to set up the debuff, not attack them for a turn for the sleep to go off, and the sleep doesn't actually go off until after their turn is over, which almost makes it useless as it can't be used to disrupt, like Food Coma can. Soothe is just a really bad version of Food Coma, and you can just simply swap out if you get Soothe and let your pet sleep in the back row without really losing any advantage. Now, the other two abilities that can put your opponent to sleep both only have a 25% chance to do it when they land, and both Moth Dust and Sleeping Gas are good abilities. Sleep Gas was so good it got nerfed at the end of Warlords of Draenor, right before Legion, and even then it's still an okay move seeing as these two abilities just hit like normal abilities, and just have a chance to also put the target to sleep, makes them great. Whereas Soothe does no damage, and requires way too much setup for its sleep, that is just straight up done better by another ability. Number 2, Haymaker. Haymaker is an ability that hits for 250% damage of a basic attack, but at 3 costs. It has a 3 turn cooldown, it only has a 50% chance to hit, and if it fails to land, your pet is stunned for one turn. Now, there's an ability called Cataclysm, which hits for 200% the damage of a basic attack, only has a one turn cooldown, and has no penalty if you miss. And Cataclysm is a terrible move no one uses. There's another ability called Fist of the Forest, which hits for 200% the damage of a basic attack, has a 100% chance to hit, only it has a 5 turn cooldown, and that move rarely sees play. 
There are two other 50% hit chance abilities that hit for double damage that do see a lot of play, and those are Blood in the Water and Nocturnal Strike. And the reason these two see play is because they have shorter cooldowns than Fist of the Forest, plus they have ways to grant them 100% hit chances. If the target has a bleed on them, Blood in the Water will always hit. And if the target is blinded, Nocturnal Strike will always hit. Haymaker has none of these special modifiers for its hit chance, but shares their cooldowns and has a bad negative effect if it misses, which means if you miss the ability, you lose that turn of attacking, plus you lose the next turn for the stun. So a miss on a Haymaker is the same as losing two turns of battle, all for 20% more damage than the other similar moves. Its drawbacks are just too much for its potential damage, and only worth using if you can somehow increase its hit chance with an uncanny luck buff or something. Until you remember, birds with nocturnal strike have ways to both increase their hit chance by 50%, or put a blind on the enemy pet by themselves, making them some of the hardest hitters in the game with their nocturnal strike combos. As relying on uncanny luck for a single target nuke with a three round cooldown, is just too inconsistent, and using it without a hit buff is too risky, as it's one of the few moves in the game with a negative effect for a miss, making it one of the worst abilities to use in the game, but not the worst, as there's still one more move on this list. Number 1. Plant. Now Plant is a heal, technically. What it does is you have to first use the ability to plant yourself in the ground, which does nothing for the turn but start a turn timer and prevent you from swapping. Then, as the turns progress, your timer will go up, and once you use the ability again, you will unplant yourself and heal up, based on how long you were underground. Only, the heal is for 60% of a basic attack each turn. Now, there's this other really basic heal that a ton of pets have called Healing Wave, which on a 3 turn cooldown, heals you for 150% the amount of a basic attack. In order to surpass Healing Wave and Healing, you have to plant yourself for 3 turns, then lose 2 turns of attacking to plant, and then unplant, instead of just losing that one turn on the Healing Wave to cast it that one time. And with how long it takes for a plant to surpass Healing Wave and Healing, you could actually cast a second Healing Wave for even more healing than plant. So plant is just like a really slow and crappy haunt. But the thing is, there are other haunts in pet battles. Both Nature's Ward and Photosynthesis are haunts in pet battles that have no cooldowns and will heal you at the end of every turn for 5 turns. Nature's Ward will heal you for 40% of a basic attack each turn, and Photosynthesis will heal you for about 30%, or 60% if the weather is sunlight. And both of these haunts will continue to heal the pet if you swap them out. Whereas with Plant, you need to stay in in order to use it. Not only do you need to stay in, the ability literally prevents you from swapping out. Plant is just a really bad hot that doesn't even heal unless you use the ability two times, and stay alive long enough for it to stack up, and just straight up underperforms when compared to other healing abilities in the game that are much more convenient to use as well. So for both just being straight up the worst heal in the game, and for being the worst ability to use, Plant is easily the worst pet battle ability in the game. Alright, and that's the end of the video. I did try my best to explain everything in a way that even people who aren't very familiar with pet battles could understand what I was talking about. So if you are new to pet battles, I'll have some very helpful videos in the video description to get started. And if you have any ideas for pet battle top 10s just like this one, I'd love to hear them down in the comments to maybe make them in a future video.